Well, hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Mr. Perry. And here we are back at it with Unit 2, Lesson 7. This time we're going to do a deeper dive into the strings uh, with string anatomy. And then we're going to look at the string methods and what they do. Um, so just a quick review here. Um, remember that there are two main ways to create objects of the string class. You can call the string class's constructor by saying string word equals new string. And then in parentheses and quotation marks, um, whatever you want to uh, store as that string. You can also uh, set the string variable to what's called a string literal. So you can just say string word equals Java. And uh, this is the way that I normally do it. It's a lot more easy and quick and concise. So there you go. But it's important to know that both of these essentially do the same thing. All right, so string anatomy. So here is our string right here. Here is Java with its exclamation point. And you have up here, we're counting the number of characters. So obviously there are five characters in this string. So it has a length of five. But it's also important to note that each individual character has an index. And the index starts counting at zero. So this is at index zero, one, two, three, and four. So one thing that's really important to remember is that the index value um, of each character in a string is always one less than the number of characters. You've got five characters in Java, which means the index of the last character is four. Okay, so basically from here on out, we're just going to look at a bunch of string methods. So these are all methods that are in the string class. And the first one is length with uh, obviously parentheses on the end. This will return an integer representing the number of characters in the string object. So um, if I said string word equals new string and then had Java in there like that, and then if I had a print statement um, and I called word.length inside that print statement, um, obviously it's going to return the number five. And there you go, pretty easy. We also have what's called index of, and it needs to have a character in it. And what this is going to do, it's going to return an integer representing the index value of the first time the character appears in the word. So there's a couple of things that are important to remember here. Again, it's the index value that it's going to return. And it's going to be the index value of the first time that the character appears in the word. So if we had our Java string and uh, we called word.index of v, what it's going to do is it's going to look in Java and it's going to find the first uh, time V appears, which is right here, and it's going to return that index value of two. That's what would uh, print to our screen. Now, if we did this one, uh, index of A, again, it's going to go in here, even though A appears twice, it's at one and three, it's going to give you the first time it appears. So that would uh, return one because A, even though it's the second character, it's in the first index, um, or it's at index one in that string. And then uh, what do you think is gonna happen if we did word.index of Q? Go ahead and pause the video and, and uh, you know, make an educated guess as to what you think might happen if you uh, call the index of method with a character that doesn't actually appear in the string. So what it's gonna do is it needs to give some kind of error message but what it actually returns is negative one. And the reason why you know that's an error message is in a string, there is no negative one uh, index. The, the very first uh, character is always at zero. So if you get negative one, um, when you call the index of method, you know that something's got gone wrong. All right, now we got a couple of easy ones. There is the two uppercase method, <clears throat> and that's going to return a string with all capitalized letters. So um, if I had that same string and I uh, wanted to print word dot two uppercase, then what that's gonna return is Java in all caps. Obviously the exclamation point is unchanged. And similarly, you also have a two lowercase method that you can call on a string. And obviously that's just gonna take everything that's in the string and convert it to lowercase. So if you did a print statement and you did word dot two lowercase, what would print would just be Java, where that uppercase J would be uh, uh, converted to a lower a lowercase. All right, so now we're going to be looking at the uh, equals method. And if you call uh, the equals method, it needs to have a, um, a word in here. 
and it's going to return a Boolean value indicating whether the strings match exactly. So if I'm going to compare one word object to another word object, and if I want to see whether or not they are in fact the exact same string, um, I would call the dot equals method. So if we had string word <coughs> equals new string Java, and then if I did string word two equals, and then I did um, you know this version of it here, if I call if I um, called word dot equals, and then I put word two in here, um, and if I had that in a print statement, then uh, what's going to print? It's going to print the value of false. Um, if I did it uh, like this, though, if I changed word two to be Java and they were the same thing, and then if I put them in a, um, a print statement, um, then that would also return true. I am noticing a syntax error here. I should have an extra parenthesis um, to close uh, the print statement. And then um, obviously the dot equals method gets its own set of parentheses. So I'll have to fix that later. Anyways, let's keep going. We're going to get to a really, really important one here, the substring method. We're going to be practicing this one a lot. It's going to be a very useful method for you guys. So what this does is it returns a string starting at index i and ending at the character before index j. Now, that's a really important uh, note to take note of here. Um, it starts at i and it goes up to j, but it does not include the character that's at j. So we're going to look at a couple of examples here. We've got our, sa our same uh, string object here, word, and it still has Java. So if I wanted to print word.substring 1, 3, that means it's going to go to um, index 1, which is A, and it's going to print A, and it's going to print V, but it stops when it gets to 3. So that would return A, V. These can be a little confusing because, again, we're, a lot of times we're uh, tempted to include that extra character. Uh, but you just have to remember that it's not. So what would happen if we um, changed it to word.substring 0, 4? So it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go all the way up to 4, but it's not going to include 4. So this would just return Java without the um, exclamation point. Um, and then you might be curious what's going to happen if we did this, uh, word.substring 1, 8. So obviously it can go to index 1, uh, but it cannot go all the way up to index 7, so we might expect some kind of uh, error message to occur. And sure enough, uh, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get what's called a string index out of bounds exception. So this is a, um error message that basically says you're trying to access an index that is outside of the bounds of this particular string object. All right, and then there's another version of this substring method where you just uh, call the substring method and you only have a single uh, character in here, a single integer. And what this does is this returns a substring starting at index i, and then it just automatically includes everything else in it. So for this one here, if you call word.substring just with one parameter, um, or one argument, I should say, then it's going to start at index one and it just grabs the rest of the string and it would print that. So you would end up with Ava with the exclamation point. And then uh, one of the more confusing ones is this one here, the compare to method. So um, the compare to method, you always have to have another word object that you're passing in. And it's going to return an integer that represents how far forward or backward the second string is from the first string that was used to call the method in the alphabet. So this will make a little bit more sense after we look at some examples. So um, here we have string word one equals ape, string word two equals zebra. And then in my print statement, I'm printing word.compare2. So I'm calling the compare2 method with word1, which is ape. And then the um, argument that I'm passing is, in is word2, which is zebra. So again, word1 comes before word2 in the alphabet. So that means the compare2 method will return a negative number. Um, word one would come before uh, word two. If, it, if it's a negative number, um, that means word one must come before word two. 
So this would actually return negative 25 because to go from Z all the way back to A, um, that's minus 25 in the alphabet. Um, it's more important just to remember that if the first word comes before the second word, then you're going to get a negative number. Um, whereas if the uh, first word is, is after um, the second word, you would get a positive number. The way I like to think about this method when I'm figuring it out is what does it take to start here in the alphabet? So you look at what is in here, which of course is zebra, and then end over here in the alphabet. So obviously this is Z, this is A, I would have to go backward, I would have to go in the negative direction. So again, I'm expecting to get a negative uh, integer. Again, negative 25. Let's look at some other examples of it. So what happens if you did string word one equals eight and string word two equals eight? Feel free to pause the video and make a guess as to what you think uh, would return in this instance. So um, again, what does it take to go from word two to word one? Well, in this case, it doesn't take anything. Uh, it's the same string. So um, if you compare identical uh, string objects, um, as far as the alphabet is concerned, then you're gonna get zero returned when you do the compare to method. All right, if we switch things up, if we made word one zebra and word two apple, again, what does it take to start from apple and end at zebra? Well, we would have to go forward in the alphabet, so we, we would expect to get a positive integer here, and that's exactly what would happen. We would get a positive 25. And uh, let's see, what else? What about this one here? We've got word one equals ape and word two equals apple. So you might be thinking, you know, you might be wondering how it's gonna handle this. If we compared word two, which is apple, uh, to word one, which is ape, it ignores all of the characters that are, are identical and it finds the first, um, you know, pair of characters that are different. In this case, it's P and E. So you would think, all right, well, what does it take to go from letter P all the way to letter E? Well, that's gonna be backward in the um, alphabet. So we're gonna expect to get a negative number. And in this case, we would get a negative 11. And with that, guys, that is it. Um, this one is really just about becoming familiar with the string methods. And uh, so with that, we're good. Thanks for watching and uh, be sure to leave a question or a comment.